الحمد لله الذي كرم بني آدم وحملهم في البر والبحر ورزقهم من الطيبات وفضلهم على كثير ممن خلق تفضيلا ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن سيدنا ومولانا محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله تبارك تعالى عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وبارك وسلم تسليما كثيرا كثيرا أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الناس إنا خلقناكم من ذكر وأنثى وجعلناكم شعوبا وقبائل لتعارفوا وقال تعالى يا أيها الذين آمنوا كونوا قوامين لله شهداء بالقسط ولا يجرمنكم شنآن قوم على ألا تعدلوا اعدلوا هو أقرب للتقوى واتقوا الله إن الله خبير بما تعملون May praise be to Allah, the creator and sustainer of the worlds, and peace and blessings be upon his prophet Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam, the head of all messengers, upon his family and all his companions. Respected chief guest, honorable judges, and dear listeners, First of all, I would like to thank you for giving me a chance to speak on the topic of human rights in Islam. Dear friends, we know very well what human rights are exactly like. Just what exactly are human rights? Is it just the right to life? Alternatively, is it the right to freedom, liberty and justice? Do human rights include having the right to security and a safe haven? Since the end of World War II, Western international politics appears to have focused on securing human rights. However, the reality is that the line between securing such rights, maintaining state sovereignty has become blurred. The growing power in politics involved in human rights advocacy tends to favor Western ideas. But these are not necessarily universal ideas. Many would claim that the human rights doctrine has become an accessory to spread Western moral imperialism. Dear friends, while nobody denies that there are certain inalienable human rights, just what those rights are is often subject to fierce debate. While some cultures focus on individual rights and freedoms, others are more concerned with rights that ensure the survival of communities. The world is populated by diverse nations and tribes, so it makes sense that laws and declarations made by human beings are not going to be universally accepted, no matter how morally upstanding they are. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Holy Quran, Ya ayyuhal nasu inna khalaqnakum min dhakarin wa untha, wa ja'alnakum shu'uban wa qaba'ila li ta'arafu. O mankind, indeed we have created you from male and female and made you peoples and tribes that you may know one another. Dear friends, from this we see that interaction between nations is normal and desirable. However, it is part of the nature of humankind to be jealous and at times self-serving. Islam takes into account these vagaries of human nature and therefore looks to the supreme creator for guidance. Human rights and responsibilities are enshrined in Islam. They are the foundation for the Sharia. I mean jurisprudential law. Dear friends, there is no doubt that around the world abuses of human rights are being perpetrated, often in the name of religion and sadly sometimes in the name of Islam. However, it is important to recognize that just because a country is known as Islamic, this doesn't mean that it automatically follows the laws sent down by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is also important to realize that not all Muslims understand and follow their religion. Culture often dictates action. Of course, the same can be said of all religions. Throughout history, humankind has used the name of God to justify unspeakable acts. Your audience, more than 1400 years ago, 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent down the Holy Quran, a book of guidance for all of humankind. He also chose Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam as the final prophet. He was given the Holy Quran. He was given the perfect religion of Islam. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala finalized the prophethood upon him. He was the human being capable of leading humankind into an era of tolerance, respect and justice. Dear friends, Muslims believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the sole creator and sustainer of humankind and the universe. He has given each human being dignity and honor and the human rights and privileges we enjoy are granted by him. The rights granted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are designed for everybody. One person is not more worthy of protection than another is. Each person is entitled to sustenance, shelter and security. And if some people are denied their God-given rights, it is the responsibility of the, those of human rights to restore those rights. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Holy Quran, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, kunu qawamina lillahi shuhada'a bil qisq, wa la yajrimannakum shana'anu qawmin ala alla ta'adilu, i'adilu huwa aqrabu lil taqwa, wa taqu Allah, inna Allah khabirun bima ta'amalun. O you who believe, stand out firmly for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, be just witnesses, and let not the enmity and hatred of others make you avoid justice, be just, that is nearer to piety, and fear Allah the Almighty. Verily, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is well acquainted with what you do. Here I conclude my talk with these words. Wa akhiru da'awana anilhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.